Hey friends, this is Vidhan. Welcome to my channel. Today we will see some non-linear applications of operational amplifier. So the first circuit, the first non-linear circuit using op-amp that we will see is integrator. The standard circuit first of all we will draw there is open negative positive V output positive terminal is grounded input signal V in is going through a resistor to negative input terminal input going to negative input terminal and there is a circuit from the output that is called the feedback circuit through a capacitor so this is the standard integrator circuit this we name CF C sub F F for feedback circuit so this is a feedback capacitor and we name it R1 now we will write down the standard voltage for integrator circuit the standard output voltage V output this V output and V output are same things but I am writing it separately it is minus 1 by R1 CF integration from 0 to T V input DT plus C you see that output is the integral operation on the input but it is not just the integral operation on input but there is also a factor which is in multiplication with this operation and this factor is called scaling factor this is also called gain and this depends on R1 and CF that means capacitance value and the resistance value okay now we move to our next circuit that is differentiator so we will draw the standard differential circuit that is we take an open negative positive positive terminal is grounded input voltage is given to negative input terminal through a capaci capacitor now and from the output there is a feedback circuit and that feedback circuit is through a resistor now we will name it RF F for feedback circuit that means feedback resistance this is RF and this we name C1 it's just a name likewise I have named it R1 now see one thing that it is very easy to get the circuit differentiated circuit from the integrated circuit it's just that we have to exchange the places of R1 and CF see here that here there is a capacitor in the feedback circuit but now there is a register in the feedback circuit whereas there was a register here before the open and now there is a capacitor before the open so we have just exchanged the places of the integrator in the integrator to get a differentiator so this is a trick to remember how to draw a differentiator circuit when we know the integrator circuit okay now we will write down the standard output voltage for the differentiator circuit this is minus R F C1 and D V input by DT so you see that this circuit gives us the derivative operation on the input so this is the derivation on the input but also that output is not just the derivative of the input but also there is a factor and this factor is called the scaling factor that means there is also a gain and this is gain and this obviously depends on RF C1 RF C1 okay 
then we next go to our logarithmic amplifier the standard circuit for this is positive is grounded there is input voltage V in which is going through a register to negative input terminal output and from the output there is a feedback circuit and this feedback is through a diode so this is the logarithmic amplifier circuit standard logarithmic amplifier circuit and here I will write R1 just like I have written C1 R1 and I will not name anything for this diode I will not name this diode because this because of this diode I will see in the output there are some new terms so let us see the standard output for this logarithmic amplifier is minus V T log of V input by I S R 1 and log to the base E okay here we see two new things this VT and this IS actually these things are because of the diode this VT and this IS have come into existence because we have used a diode in the logarithmic amplifier so what is this this is called thermal voltage thermal voltage and this is 26 millivolt at room temperature this is what this is reverse saturation current or I would write reverse R saturation as current C reverse saturation current you must be knowing that for a diode when a diode is reverse biased then the current through the diode stops but you remember that there is a current and that current is called reverse saturation current actually when the diode is reverse biased then the current due to majority carriers stops but at that time there is a current due to minority carriers and that current due to minority carriers is called the reverse saturation current this is also called the leakage current and this is thermally generated thermal generated current or thermally generated current why thermally that means it depends on the heat when there is a heat then the minority carriers get produced or they get generated that means they depend on temperature if the temperature is higher then the heat of the diode is higher and then the number of minority carriers that will be produced will be higher and therefore this uh, reverse saturation current will be higher and by the way this reverse saturation current itself this current is very weak current a very small current this is of the order of one nano ampere for silicon diode and it is of the order of micro ampere for germanium diode and this is extremely temperature dependent because it depends on the temperature because of the temperature heat increases and because of the heat the minority carriers increases okay so the reverse saturation current also increases. so these are the things that you got to see in some detail from some textbook okay so we for now move to next circuit that is anti-logarithmic circuit oh sorry amplifier and this is given by we have M op amp negative positive is grounded output and now an input is given to the negative input terminal through a diode and there is a feedback circuit but now the feedback is through a register so this is the difference and I name it RF because feedback resistance now see one thing that 
here there was a diode now there is the register and there was a register there is a diode so what we have done we have exchanged the places of diode and register in the logarithmic amplifier to get the empty logarithmic amplifier so again this is a trick that you have to remember how to get the anti logarithmic amplifier from logarithmic amplifier only the places have been exchanged okay now the standard output for this is equals to minus i s r1 sorry this is i s r f and e to the power v input by v t see again this vt that means thermal voltage and this is reverse saturation current these things have come when there is a diode in the circuit so these things have come into existence whenever they come into existence whenever there is a diode in the circuit well so we are done with our nonlinear circuits first of all why they are called nonlinear this is because you see the output output is integration of v input and this operation is non-linear operation always remember that integration is a non-linear operation similarly differentiation of the input the output as a differentiation of input and this differentiation is non-linear operation similarly logarithmic of anything is non-linear operation and similarly exponential of anything is non-logarithm sorry non-linear operation and that's why all these circuits all these circuits are called non-linear circuits obviously they all have used open now one more thing that you must have noticed each output is negative see here it's negative it's negative it's negative it's negative why this is because of a simple reason that whenever you give the input to a negative input terminal then the output is negative and that is what has happened this v in has been given to negative input terminal so output is negative here for the differentiator also input voltage has been given to negative input terminal and therefore output is negative and here also that input has been given to negative input terminal and therefore the output is negative and for anti logarithmic 2 input has been given to negative terminal so the output is negative okay so we have got it now one more thing that I would ask you I don't know whether you have noticed it or not let me tell you that each of the circuit is containing negative feedback see here what is the negative feedback when a circuit from the output goes to the input terminal and input which one positive or negative negative input terminal so here also output goes to negative input terminal and here also output goes to negative input terminal so each one is containing a negative feedback circuit what is the reason the reason is we want a stable output all these outputs are stable whenever we use the negative feedback circuit we get stable output but if we use we have not but if we use positive feedback circuit then we will get oscillating outputs and oscillating outputs are not required but oscillating outputs are required for oscillators oscillators like uh, a stable multi vibrator a stable multi vibrator is an oscillator and the output of that oscillator is oscillating signal okay oscillating output so for oscillator circuit that is why we use positive feedback circuit but wherever in practical circuits when we need the stable output we use negative feedback circuit and therefore in most of the ap applications of operational amplifier in practical applications of operational amplifier where we use the mathematical circuits uh, we use the circuits for mathematical operations we generally use negative feedback circuits okay so this is what that you have to remember and I would suggest everybody to memorize all these voltage formulae output voltage formulae because these are standard voltage formulae that you got to remember for your future help okay and also remember all these standard circuits using op thank you